And welcome, welcome, welcome to Fox 13 Unscripted, all of our streaming friends on fox13news.com, our Fox the local app. Look who we've got with us in studio. It is Brian Stern from Grable Rescue. How are you, my friend? Good. Good, good to so see good you. So good to see you. Good to see you, too. I'm surprised you're here and available. Uh, I'm, not supposed to, I'm not supposed to be. <laughs> I know. I thought, well, I thought, well, with all with the Middle East blowing up right now and so much that's been going on, I thought the, the perfect person to have a little chat about this would be you. And I thought there's no way he's going to be in town. So I texted him and said, sure enough, happy to be here. Um, I want to ask you, we have so much to talk about. We've sure. got a prisoner swap. We've got, of course, Lebanon. We've got Haiti. We've got Ukraine. Um, but I first want to ask you about uh, your Purple Heart. Sure. Last time we were together, uh, we bumped into each other in Normandy. Mm-hmm. Uh, what an incredible thing. We're going to talk about D-Day, too. I want some of your thoughts on that, because I, I'd love for our viewers to hear a little bit more about that. Um, but you told me something fascinating about your Purple Heart. You, I know you uh, earned your Purple Heart when you were working for the Army, and you were working at 9-11, right? You were yeah. working at the World Trade Center. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was. Uh, uh, I had an office at Six World Trade and Seven right. World Trade Center, and uh, my Purple Heart is from uh, the impact of Tower 2. Yeah. So it literally came-, came down on you. Yeah, yeah, like the, uh, I was standing like uh, uh, kind of the exit hole. So when the second plane hit, I was on the other side of the of the building as all the stuff came down. Just amazing. You showed me your Purple Heart. We got some video of it. You showed this to me in uh, Normandy. Uh, I didn't also know, I, I thought it was fascinating when you told me that these were made back in the 1940s. Yeah, so uh, uh, fascinating, you know, military history stuff. Um in World War II, before we dropped the atomic bombs in Hiroshima and Nagasaki, the Army and the War Department was planning for a ground invasion of Japan uh, to end to, uh, to, to invade Japan and end the war. And um, they thought the casualties would be so extreme, because they would have been, um, that they made so many Purple Hearts in advance. And, of course, we dropped the atomic bomb in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. The Japanese surrendered, and, and all those Purple it. Hearts went into storage. So there's still there's still so many of them that uh, if you get a Purple Heart today, it was actually made the the one that you're issued is was actually made in 1940. I think they were made in 1943 or yeah, 42. Just incredible, just incredible. Obviously, thank you for your service. Um, and here you are saving the world and rescuing Americans in war zones. Trying. Uh, well, Trying. you you are. What do we got? Over seven thousand you guys have rescued already, and yeah. what six hundred different operations? Uh, we're at six hundred and sixteen rescue missions. We've got a whole bunch more preparatory missions. So uh, we're busy. Is the a nice way of saying it, uh, Afghanistan, Ukraine, Russia, Sudan, Haiti, Maui, Ian, Israel, and Lebanon. I was going to say Lebanon right now, we've got Americans that are there. They issued that level four travel advisor trying to get them out, right? Uh, what's the latest there? Does that seem to be the hottest spot right now? Uh, I think, um, so it's complicated. It's a, I get this question a lot. Um, th- so the Middle East is always the uh, the Beacon of all things messy geopolitically yeah. always has been probably always will be. Um, it's a it's always been dynamic for five thousand years, so it's not exactly news that there's trouble in the Middle East, right? right? Sure. Um, um, but there's other places also. Um, uh, uh, you know, the, the whole region is kind of on fire. Iran is in play, which in a way that we haven't really seen much in my at least in my career, especially after these last couple of days. And, and, and since October seventh, I mean, Iran Iran is really the the um, the the common link behind a lot of the problems, either funding or training or what have you, or just supplying weapons between the Houthis, which you see we see the Houthis hitting ships in uh, in the, in the, uh, uh, off the coast of Yemen. Uh, of course, the Houthis are now attacking Israel too. Sure. Hamas, which is a Sunni organization, Iran is Shia, but Iran is supporting them because. It's convenient. Uh, Hezbollah is a big proxy, but also Hezbollah has region. They have global presence. There are Hezbollah guys actually in Tampa, Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's not just. Um, I think it's important for everybody to understand that this, while it's a regional issue and it's an over there problem, it's very much an over here problem too. Notwithstanding that there are a whole bunch of American hostages being held, and if things continue to go bad, probably more hostages will be taken. Sure. So um, it's a, it's very complicated. You, got, you guys gave us some pictures of some of your rescues. Um, walk me through a little bit. I know each one is different. Uh, Ukraine, for example, how in the world in the middle of a war zone? Obviously, you have your military context, but as a civilian now, do you get into a war zone and bring home Americans? How does that happen? Uh, we need a lot more time for that. <laughs> uh, um, uh, doing rescues is, um, there's, there's, there's not a lot of commonality between any of them. Right, so 616 missions. Uh, each one of them are very, very, very different. There's, it's a, it, it, the recipe is kind of there. There's people in a bad spot. They don't want to be in a bad spot. And you want to get them to a safe spot. And somehow there's 
a transportation piece to it. Other than that, there's no commonality. The way we do things in Ukraine is fundamentally different than the way things we do things in Sudan, let's say. Um, uh, they're all very different. We've done, uh, we've broken people out of jail from the Russians, and we've done babies too. So um, we've done uh, Muslims, Christians, and Jews. We've done handicapped people. We've done people with with, with one leg. Just uh, amazing. All kinds of stuff. So but I know there's operational things you can't tell us, but obviously transportation is key. You, you, whether it's, it's vehicles, or airlifts, um, what can you tell us about how you're able to extract people out? Without the, the big we know thing, the military is involved to an extent, but for the most part, you're doing this on your own. No, yeah. Uh, generally speaking, where Grable works and my team works is where the military and the government is not. If the Marine Corps is there, or if SEALs are there, or the government's there, uh, they do a much better job than we do. And God bless them. They 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 do good work, and they should do good work. Uh, but there's lots of places where they can't go for one reason or another, either because of politics or policies or. What, you know, whatever those reasons are, yeah. rightly or wrongly, those reasons are sometimes easy to understand, sometimes very hard to understand. From the Americans that are stuck perspective, they don't care. They, they really don't. They don't, they don't care. They're just saying, I, bring me home. I need yeah, help now. You know, Paul Whalen, which came out today, uh, he came out today. We worked on his case for, for a very long time. Uh, he doesn't care if he was negotiated out by State Department, broken out by CIA, or if the VFW Woman's Auxiliary came and got him. He really doesn't yeah. care. What he knows is that he's in jail and he doesn't want to be. And however he gets home, that's the right answer. Where we fit in is where the government can't go for one reason or the other. And that's really where our claws come out and our fangs come out. We're used to... We're, we're very accustomed to working unsupported, which is a very weird thing if you're a soldier or, or in the special operations sure. community where, um, you know, in Afghanistan, I always tell people Afghanistan is the easiest place I've ever worked because during the war in Afghanistan. You don't hear that every day. <laughs> it, it, it's very counterintuitive. But in Afghanistan, when, when we had troops there and we were deployed there, if you got into trouble, you know, if you're a SEAL team and you hit a house and it doesn't go well, you push a button and F-16s show up. If you get shot, helicopters come and medevac you to a hospital where there's doctor, the best doctors in the world will fix you and put you back together and stuff. That's why we have so many wounded warriors. But if you do that in a place where there is no medevac, where there are no F-16s and there's no help coming for you, it's a fundamental Thanks. Thanks difference of philosophies we're of how to do things. We're going to talk about the prisoner swap. I want to ask you about D-Day 2. Uh, and I want to ask you about Maui. We've had a great conversation. I know about Maui. It seems like it may not have been the most sexy of rescues, but I thought it was fascinating what you guys were able to pull off. Uh, sit tight. We'll take a brief break. Fox 13 Unscripted right here, streaming live before your very own eyes. We'll be right back. Welcome back to our streaming show, Fox 13 Unscripted here tonight. I am here joined by Brian Stern. Brian, thanks again. Appreciate you coming. Uh, Gray Bull Rescue, uh, Navy vet, Army vet, uh, right now saving Americans from these war zones. Uh, I know you played a role it, to some extent with some of the hostage negotiations with the prisoners who were released today. How does that work? How did you get involved with those? Um, well, um, we're in the we're in the bringing Americans home from captivity kind of game, right? So, um, uh, lots of organizations, not just us, lots of people have been trying for years to bring Paul Whalen home, and for about a year and change to bring Evan home, and uh, and others in other places around the world. Um, uh, can't really get into what we did or or what we didn't do, um, and the reality is, is we actually don't know what impact we had. Uh, sure. we, we, we really don't. So these things are very, very, very complicated. I cannot thank this. The uh, uh, State Department has an office called the, uh, spe the SPIHOP, the Special Presidential Envoy for Hostage Affairs. Um, these are a group of Americans who are extremely small and under-resourced and underfunded, and they're the real heroes of the day today. They don't get any press, and uh, no one really knows who they are, but these are the, these are the hostage negotiation guys yeah. uh, uh, and girls of the U.S. government, and they, they, um, what they pulled off today was nothing short of amazing. As a guy who has done this a lot, uh, I've done a lot of these negotiations. I've done a lot of these kinds of operations. These are very complicated things. They're very delicate. Um, they can fall apart, and they often fall apart sure. many times. Uh, what they did today was was nothing short of just uh, just truly amazing. I'm, I'm I'm jealous that they were able to pull it off because uh, um, it really is remarkable. I'm just going to rattle through a couple of things because I have a lot I want to ask you. We're running out of time. Uh, Maui. Uh, it seemed as though, I won't put words in your mouth, but it seems as though at the time, um, those needed rescuing weren't getting any help. You got there, you guys literally rented private helicopters and started airlifting people because nobody else was doing anything. Uh, how did that happen? Uh, I don't know how it happened. Um, we uh, we saw it on TV. Um, we saw it on TV, and, and the reality is, is we went there as a dress rehearsal for Taiwan. Uh, I had told my team... 
don't expect to do any operations because we're coming from Tampa. By the time we get from Tampa to Hawaii, the whole, you know, the entire Pacific fleet is in Hawaii. Uh, lots of troops, lots of hospitals, lots of medics. Uh, it's in America. Um, they're only, you know, uh, Camp Smith is 15 minutes away by helicopter. By the time we get from Tampa to Maui, it'll be all over. So let's go and practice for Taiwan. It's an island. It's in the Pacific. There's all kinds of similarities there. And um, boy, were we wrong. We got there yeah. and nobody was um, uh, really doing much. So uh, we went, uh, I went to this great company called Air Maui, shameless plug. Uh, it's owned by a Vietnam veteran. And I said, uh, well, you're, I went to their ops guy and I said, uh, I think your tourism business is not going to do too well this week. Uh, your birds can sit on the ground or they can fly. Uh, I need a couple of pilots, I need a couple of birds, and we're going to get after it a little bit. And he said, who are you? And I said, Google me, I'll wait. <laughs> <laughs> meantime, meantime, you've got emergency management there looking around going, what do we do? We've got, uh, we had American Navy there wondering, what do we do? And here you are doing this. And, um, you know, ha half the stuff, people always ask, you know, how does it work? Well, half half the battle is showing up and just saying, and having the, the, um, the 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 you know the uh, I don't want to say the guts to try but just having the effort just you know if you if you and show the want up to yeah yeah if yeah. you if you show up and you say yeah people are dying let's go do something about it and I'm not going to watch it on TV yeah. and um, you know our moniker at Grable we have two big uh, slogans one is don't be a spectator so when we watch things and we see things that are bad and we know we can help we choose choose to do something. Sometimes that's a donation that people can do. Sometimes let's get on a helicopter in Maui and go fly into the hot right, zone. Right. And the other one is operate at the speed of need. The speed of need is not the speed of government. That's not the speed of business even. The speed of need is when you call 911 and you say, my house is on fire, they don't ask you, did you vote for Mayor Castor? They don't ask you, uh, did you pay your taxes? They don't ask any questions. They say, what's your address? And they say, we're on our way. Right there. And that's it. And speaking of be right there, your bags are packed. You got rescues in Lebanon coming up, right? Yeah, Lebanon uh, we, is going to go sideways, I think, real bad. Um, uh, I think Lebanon goes sideways real bad. I think uh, Israel is going to be impacted pretty good. And I think the surrounding countries in the area also may, uh, may take some flack. And we don't know um, what the U.S. military will do. Hopefully, uh, hopefully there's no need. Hopefully there's no need, but what we've learned through a lot of experience and a lot of operations is that even when the government comes and brave Marines show up and they do their thing, and what's called a NEO, and they do the best they possibly can, there are still people who get left behind. There's still stragglers that, are, that the Marines can't get to uh, and all kinds of other things. We learned this in Haiti just recently where the State Department did a great job evacuating people, but a lot of people couldn't get to where they were. And that's where we filled that gap. So we're not competition for the government. We work where they can't work. And that synergy, we enjoy a wonderful relationship with the State Department, um, uh, with DOD, with the government. Uh, um, I, um, you know, a lot of people give them a lot of flack. They have an incredibly difficult job to do. They have a lot of politics and policies and all kinds of things that – they even sometimes get frustrated by. Sure. We don't have those problems. Uh, we don't have those problems at all. I can go where we, wherever we want to go, do whatever we need to do. And sometimes they can be frustrated with us, and sometimes we can be frustrated with them, but they're, they're all good folks, yeah. every single one. And if somebody does need help, grablerescue.org, right? You're asking for if people need rescues, they need they go on there and make their actual request, right? That's Correct. the best way to do it? Yeah, we're the, we're the, okay. world, we're the world's worst travel agency. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we promise we'll, we'll fly you, but we don't know when. <laughs> we'll get you home. Brian Stern, Grable Rescue, thank you again thank so pleasure. much. Uh, safe travels. Uh, keep us posted. I know you're going to be doing great things, and uh, hopefully all goes well. And we need donations. We need public help. We're entirely donor funded. Uh, GrableRescue.org is where you can go to donate. Is where you can go to ask for help and get help. That's also where you can go to give help. These helicopters do not fly themselves. Sure. Uh, buses cost money. Aid costs money. Our travel for my crew costs money. Plane tickets cost money. Yeah. Hotels cost money. Yeah. And we need public help. Yep. Really bad. Safe travels. Thanks again. Thanks so much, Brian Stern. Thank you guys for watching. Sit tight. Uh, we hope to see you later on tonight at ten. Have a great night.